Hi, this is David from Ethical Family Planning. We get a lot of people emailing, calling in, hitting the forums, asking us what the difference is between contradrow and a regular spermicide. When we talk of a regular spermicide, we're talking of a nanoxinol 9 based product such as Gynol, uh, Gynol 2, Gygel, where the nanoxinol 9 is there as an active ingredient, a microbicide, which breaks down the cell walls of the sperm, but unfortunately, it also breaks down the cell walls of the skin. It can't distinguish between the two, and so both the man and the woman are both exposed to this. And there's a lot of reported itchiness with this. Better than an unwanted pregnancy, admittedly, but some people do prefer to go for a natural option. So here at Ethical Family Planning, we work with Contragel, it's natural, it's vegan, and contains the Noxanol 9, but that then prompts the question, how does it stop you getting pregnant if it doesn't contain Noxanol 9? To understand that, you've got to understand what you're doing when you apply such a gel. Here we've got a model of a cervix. This would sit high up in the vagina. The tip of the cervix here is where the sperm would be trying to enter into the womb. Uh, if it happens to be the time of month when you're ovulating around that time, obviously the sperm can reach the egg, cause pregnancy, we don't want that to happen. So we put a barrier in place. Uh, here we're going to use a fem cap, nice little dinky cervical cap there, caps the end. Okay. However, when you turn it around, not quite sure if you can see with this camera in this light, but you see there's actually a gap there. The fem cap's a perfect circle, the body doesn't produce body parts which are perfect circles unfortunately. So there is a bit of a gap there. So what do you do? Well, when you read the instructions of your fem cap, which you should always do, of course, it'll tell you to apply spermicide or contraceptive gel like Contragel on the inside. So when it goes on, it's then packed on the back. So it's forming part of a physical barrier, okay? Now, this would sit at the back of the vaginal canal there. So when the fem cap goes on, it's forming a nice tight fit. Okay, so we've got all of this side section of the fem cap here also forming part of the barrier. So again, before insertion, you would cover this also in a gel. So the idea is everything around the edges is covered in a gel. That makes it almost impossible for sperm to enter around the edges because you'll never get a perfect, perfect fit. It's going to move a little bit okay, during intercourse. So the idea is having a gel down the side means that the sperm can't pass through. It's gonna get stuck in that gel. Now the other thing as well is when the sperm comes towards the cervix, uh, we're talking about the tip of the penis, ejaculation, the ejaculate would hit this section here, okay? So again, according to the instructions, you would be placing a reservoir of uh, spermicidal gel here. So when the ejaculate hits, it gets literally, literally stuck and gunked up in that gel. You'd then leave it in place for six to eight hours before hooking a finger, pulling it out, removing it. And the presumption is at that point, all of the sperm would have died off, be stuck in the gunky gel. The, the texture of it is very viscous. And so you'd be removing dead sperm, okay? That way, when it's removed, there's no more barrier in place, but there's no more live sperm in place either. Uh, in a similar way, if you had the chia diaphragm, okay, the chia diaphragm protects the front of the cervix there, okay. You've got to cover a much larger surface area with this, so you might be using a little bit more spermicide perhaps, but it's the same kind of deal, okay. Again, you, you're never going to get a perfect fit, so you'd be applying uh, a contraceptive gel to the outside and to the front here. Basically, when the ejaculate hits here, you know, it's going to run off, it's going to come out of place or whatever, it's not going to hang around or anything. Um, but you'd be covering that in a spermicide as well. Um, with the regular UFO style Milex, Milex diaphragm as well, it's a pretty similar affair, okay? Gets inserted, pops into place, you've already covered it in spermicide and it's forming the barrier there, okay? So, in short, what we're talking about is the contragel forming part of a physical barrier to capture the sperm, to stop it escaping around the edges of your barrier, and eventually it will die off. Why does it die off? Well, sperm doesn't live forever. It's very, very, very weak. If you put sperm in a hostile environment, it dies off really quickly. Slight change in temperature, it dies off. A lot of fertility problems are actually caused by slight temperature changes in the testicles, which causes sperm to die off 
you put sperm in a hostile pH environment, it also dies off really quickly. The pH of Contragel is very, very hostile to the sperm. So that's the short story of the difference between Contragel and regular spermicides. You can see it's a natural alternative. It's on ethicalfamilyplanning.com. Go out and try it.